practice test for integrated speaking task four reading listening speaking academic directions in this question you'll read a short passage about an academic subject next you will listen to a short talk based on that subject you will then be asked a question about the information provided in the reading text and the conversation after you hear the question you will have 30 seconds to prepare your response and 60 seconds to speak once you've recorded your response you should compare your talk to the sample talk read the following article about the rhinoceros beetle you will have 45 seconds to read the article begin reading now Now, listen to a professor talk about the rhinoceros beetle. As you have read in your textbooks, the rhinoceros beetle attacks palm trees. Here's how they do it. The rhinoceros beetle lays its eggs in rubbish heaps, rotting tree trunks, sawdust, and other vegetative matter. These hatch into small larvae in 10 to 18 days. The younger larvae feed on decaying wood and vegetative matter and can grow up to lengths of about 60 millimeters or more. During this stage, they do not damage the plants. The larval stage lasts for 2.5 to 7 months, after which pupation takes place within the breeding site. The pupae will require another 1.5 to 2 months before they transform into adults and become a threat to the palms. They enter the heart of the palms and feed on tender tissues within. Subsequently, the new leaves will be damaged and the resulting fan-shaped frond is characteristic of a rhinoceros beetle attack. To control the population of this insect, chemicals such as carboferon are used. Traditionally, a piece of barbed wire was used to spear and collect the beetles attacking the young leaves of palms. So the next time you see your palm fronds bearing the rhinoceros beetle's characteristic signature, stop to take a close look around. There may be a new bug in town. The reading passage in the lecture discussed the insect known as a rhinoceros beetle. First, why is the rhinoceros beetle a threat to palm trees? Second, what is being done to protect palm trees against this insect? Here is a sample response of how you could answer this question. From the reading passages, it is learned that the rhinoceros beetle, identified by a distinctive horn on its head, damages palm trees, and the listening passage explains how the insect damages the trees and how the pesky bug can be controlled. According to the listening passage, first the beetle lays its eggs in vegetative matter, such as a palm tree. The eggs hatch into larvae. Next, the larval stage lasts a few months at which point pupation takes place. Finally, in two more months, the beetle becomes an adult and then enters the palm tree throughout its center. 
At that point, the beetle feeds on the softer part of the tree, thus damaging the new leaves. The listening passage suggests that to control the population of the rhinoceros beetle, chemicals are used. Also, exterminators use a piece of barbed wire to spear and collect the young beetles attacking the palm tree leaves. Let's take a look at the rubric. This is called the TOEFL IBT test integrated speaking rubrics, the scoring standards. This is the criteria that ETS will use to grade your speaking tasks for the integrated speaking task. So first of all, four. General description. The response fulfills the demands of the task with at most minor lapses in completeness. It is highly intelligible and exhibits sustained coherent discourse. A response at this level is characterized by all, interesting, all the following. You have to have all of these characteristics in delivery, language use, and topic development. So this is a general description. And the speech that you just listened to, it fulfills the demands of the task. It, it discusses, first of all, how the beetle attacks the palm tree and secondly it describes what is being done to control the insect so it doesn't damage more palm trees so it's important that whatever the question is on speaking task 4 or any other speaking task you want to make sure that you address the task clearly directly include the important information required from the task let's talk about delivery Speech is generally clear, fluid, and sustained. It may include minor lapses or minor difficulties with pronunciation or intonation. Pace may vary at times as the speaker attempts to recall information. Overall intelligibility remains high. So when you're talking, you might say, to control the beetle, exterminators are um, using chemicals, and also traditionally they have a barb which they used to spear the insect. So you can pause a little bit and that's not going to affect your score but be careful if you pause too often that does interrupt your pace and if you pause too much it also prevents you maybe from fully answering all the important points of the question. Language use the response demonstrates good control of basic and complex grammatical structures that allow for coherent, efficient, automatic expression of relevant ideas. Let's take a look at the speech thinking about this idea. Again, good control of basic and complex grammar that allows for coherent, efficient, auto automatic expression of all right, taking a look at the speech, let's take a look at what's called control of basic and complex grammar. Control means you're, you're using it without a lot of problems, and coherent and automatic kind of means everything connects together and your writing or your speaking uh, sounds natural. So first of all, in the first sentence here, let's read this one. It says, um, wow, this is one sentence. From the reading passage, it is learned that the rhinoceros beetle, identified by distinctive horn on his head, damages palm trees, and the listening passage explains how the insect damages the trees and how the pesky bug can be controlled. So in this case, you actually have this connector in the middle. This joins what we call a compound sentence. But on each side of it, you have multiple clauses. For example, it is learned that, and that introduces this particular noun clause, and then you have the listening passage explains how the insect damages the trees, that's one noun clause, and how the pesky bug can be controlled, that's a second one. So you have what's called a compound, complex sentence. The speaker's not having too many problems with it. That's pretty good control of both basic, actually this is good control of complex grammar. So let's take a look at basic. Here's a basic type sentence. It says, the eggs hatch into larvae. That's a very short sentence. Now, if the whole speech is shorter sentences, that would be good control of basic grammar, 
but not good control of complex grammar. So you definitely would not get uh, a higher, a highest, the highest score if you only use basic grammar. It's a combination of basic and complex grammar, which is important. All right, let's take a look at another characteristic here. It says coherent, automatic expression of ideas. Coherent might be something like you're using a word like first the beetle lays its eggs, next the larval stage lasts a few months, finally in about two more months the beetle becomes blah 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 whatever. So using the grammar and using those transition words in sequence like that it connects everything together. It makes it efficient, it makes it automatic, it makes it easy to understand. And part of your speaking is you want to try to sound as natural as you can. Anyway, so what have we said so far? We're saying that the speech demonstrates good control of basic and complex grammar, and this allows for coherent and automatic expression of, of ideas. The speaker sounds natural. Okay, we're back on this concept here it's called language use we're gonna look a little bit more at this uh, where it says here contains genuinely effective word choice though some minor or systematic errors or imprecise use may be noticeable they do not require effort or obscure meaning so the the purpose right now is to go back to the speech and look at it and look at it within the lens of the criteria I just explained to you here Again, effective word choice, uh, even though you have some minor or systematic errors or imprecise use may be noticeable, they don't require listener effort or obscure meaning. I think that's the big one right there. Okay, now let's take a look at word choice. Remember, you have to have pretty good word choice. I went ahead and highlighted some vocabulary words in the passage. First, distinctive. That's a, a good vocabulary word. Distinctive kind of means unique. It's, it identifies the beetle by this horn. It makes it easily easy to identify. You see where it says identified by. Uh, another one interesting is pesky bug. It's a very simple word that native speakers will use all the time, but a non-native speaker would probably not use the word pesky unless you had learned the word. Bug a lot of you are probably familiar with insect, but you can also use the word bug. Pesky kind of means bothersome or irritating. So that's a good word. It makes you sound very natural. This comes from the lecture here, vegetative. It also says larvae, the hatch into larvae. This is another good word that you can use to describe uh, some of the important points in the, uh, the lecture. Pupation is another one. Exterminators the people who kill the beetles. Barbed wire was also mentioned. Spear. So the writer does have precise use of vocabulary words and it's easy to understand the writer's ideas because of that. Okay, let's take a look at what is what's called some minor systematic errors that might be noticeable but it doesn't require much listener effort and it doesn't obscure meaning. Uh, let's say if you said uh, in the top, it is learn that the rhinoceros beetle and you put uh, identify instead of using the passive type meaning there. You see identify by distinctive horn on its head and you might change this here to damage which is incorrect you say damage palm trees even though you say identify by distinctive horn on its head damage palm trees the meaning is still there it doesn't require too much effort in terms of understanding the idea so these are kind of minor systematic errors that you might make when you're speaking but they don't cause a lot of problems in your ability to communicate Now, what can be more difficult is when you're using the word beetle, and maybe you pronounce it differently. You might pronounce beeble or something. And then you go through 
you write you actually say the word beeble as opposed to beetle maybe that's what you think you heard right so let's change this one for it says first the beeble lays its eggs in vegetative matter uh that can be a more serious error because beeble be beetle is it's like beeble's not a word beetle is that requires listener effort and it makes it more difficult for the listener to understand what your ideas are it's actually changed the word or the sounds into a totally different version of it which is actually not a word at all so that starts to interfere in the meaning which would uh, cause more problems again if you heard the word wire barbed wire and you say uses a piece of string instead of wire or cord you say uses a cord or string to spear that's not going to work very well either because a wire is not the same as a cord or a string and you can't very well use a cord or a string to spear something because it, it won't be stiff enough it won't be hard enough so by replacing wire with with um, string or cord or by changing beetle to beeble that's actually going to cause some trouble in uh, the listener's ability to understand what you're trying to say and your score will not be 4.0 out of 4 if you did that. Let's talk about topic development now. It says here, this is the last thing, remember, three basic areas that you evaluated on in your TOEFL speaking test. Delivery, language use, and topic development. Topic development probably they're all important but this one is really really important I mean you gotta make sure you do this one for sure it says response presents a clear progression of ideas and conveys the relevant information required by the task it includes appropriate detail though it may have minor errors or minor omissions so it doesn't have to be perfect so let's go back to the speech and look at it in terms of topic development. Let's take a look at the speech in terms of topic development. Remember that the speech needs to have a progression. It's important not to just repeat the same things all the time. That doesn't show progression of ideas and certainly you're not giving enough details to support the general ideas if you're repeating the same things over and over. So in the beginning this is a key part. It wasn't actually required by the speaking task that you saw, but it's important to integrate the two sources. For example, let's look at part of the beginning. The, this is the first part of the speech which actually mentions ideas from the reading. And then the second part of the introduction, it mentions the ideas from the listening, particularly explaining the relationship. The listening passage explains how the insect damages the trees and how the bug can be controlled. And then you have to expect that the writer is going to talk about the damage that the, tr the insect does to the tree and then how this bug can be controlled. And those are the two basic requirements of the uh, speaking task. So if, the, if you cover those two things and you give maybe some details underneath each one, you have made your task relevant to the speaking task which is important you can leave out as it says minor errors or omissions but they cannot be major let's take a look at progression of ideas in the second paragraph so you'll notice according to the listening passage you have first here the the beetle lays its eggs next the larval stage lasts a few months Finally, in about two more months, the beetle becomes an adult and then enters the palm tree. This is explaining the process. At that point, the, beast, the beetle feeds on the softer part of the tree, thus damaging the new leaves. And this implicitly explains why it's a threat to the tree, because it eats the leaves. It doesn't say it directly, but implicitly it does what it needs to do. Now, the last part of the speech this is important and it's relevant because part of the speaking task says what can be done to control so it says it says uh, chemicals are used that's one 
example that's used from the pa from the uh, listening passage. Another one: exterminators use a piece of barbed wire to spear and collect the beetles. So those are two basic ideas mentioned near the last part of the uh, uh, listening passage. So this particular speech it doesn't include everything it has left out a few things you can listen back to the listening task and then compare that with what you see here and you'll notice this, the speaker did not say everything but still it'll probably get a pretty high score because it does the job on many levels